How's it going everybody? My name is Luke C. Marcotte. Welcome back to the Blue Collar Power Hour. So today we're going to talk about the early days of the trades. Throwing it back to the good old days when I first started as a tradesman when I was 16 years old in 2014. 2013 actually. Yeah, and so it all started basically with a man that I've talked about many times on here. His name's Rob. He was a simple plumber who owned a plumbing business. Just him and one other employee. Super successful, super happy, super great life. He taught me most of the things I know about business and life, and I have expanded on those, and he always challenged me to go bigger and better. Go big or go home. So here I am trying to do so. And so throwing it all the way back then, he was a plumber. He had basically, I was super obsessed with going to college. I couldn't wait to get to college, and I was only 16 at the time. And so then he had talked me into actually going into the trades and saying, fuck college. And he told me all the reasons why it was greater, it was better, and it just made more sense. And it did make sense. I was a very, uh, I guess, bright young lad. And so I did numbers, I figured things out, and to me college always seemed like a liability, believe it or not. And so then I believed the trades were going to be right for me, especially with my skill sets and my abilities. And so it all started where the simple plumber mentored me, taught me, told me a bunch of great secrets. And then uh, a schedule came around for the trade school training in the high school where they let juniors and seniors go to another school from lunch on and they were able to take part in some kind of trade schooling. And so the schedule came around for what classes you wanted to sign up for it. And I had always wanted to be a plumber. I just wanted to be like Rob. And he's just a, a great man. I just wanted to be just like him. I didn't want anything more, anything less. He just lived a great life and I knew I could mimic it. Then came around the schedule and there was no plumbing on it, believe it or not. There was construction, there were skilled trades, and there was electrical. And he always told me if I wasn't a plumber, I would be an electrician because it's almost like a carbon copy of each other. And so then I'm like, all right, great. Well, I'm signing up for electrical. And I'm like, wait, that's even better because now when I open my own business, I won't have to compete with him. And which he wouldn't compete anyway. He had like a basically a lock on the builders that he did work for, which is super custom homes on beautiful Torch Lake in northern Michigan. Uh, but now I'm like, now I can work on jobs with him for the rest of my life. That sounds amazing. That sounds perfect, don't it? So that's how I ended up becoming an electrician. So I signed up for this schooling, went there, and I am terrible at schooling, which is why college made no sense for me. There's no need even to have a college degree oh, okay. at all. And so I signed up for this schooling. I got started in it. It taught me good basics to get started, you know, but if you're going to the trades like myself, you probably aren't the greatest at schooling. You're not some MIT scholar. Uh, and so the schooling aspect in the trade school, I'm not dissing, it just wasn't for me. There's some people that I would work very well for, so I'm not like knocking trade school at all. But for me, I needed to be in the field and I needed to be doing it firsthand, hands-on to learn. It was the only way it made sense to me. So then after about a few months of that, which I'm super thankful for, uh, I got to learn good things, good lessons, uh, a few like codes, things of that sort. Uh, but I was, I was the loser of the class, basically. Uh, I was the one people made fun of. I was the people that I was the one that uh, nobody wanted me to be there type thing. Uh, the teachers didn't want me to be there. I just was not good at it. I was absolutely terrible at it. I couldn't get anything. Everything didn't make sense to me. I just have a super like dyslexic learning disability that I just I, I can't learn anything fast. Everything's super slow and on my own time, doing it hands on, being the first person player in the game type thing, and so. After a few months of that, I said, hey, screw this. I'm gonna, I need to start collecting hours because I know I need to start getting hours for my apprenticeship. So I went, I started talking to contractors. They told me I was stupid because I was a kid that wanted to get into the trades. They told me I was stupid because I was too young trying to get in. They told me I was stupid. And you're just a, a kid, <laughs> a stupid kid. And I should never come back because why would they try to work with some kid in high school? And they were told me I was stupid. I mean, like, literally they told me I was stupid with that exact word. They told me I was stupid to come to a place without any experience. Well, how the hell am I supposed to get started then, you know? So it was just super painful, super rough getting started, which everything has always been in my life. But it's good because I learned the hard ways, and I can share that with you guys of how I made it through it, which I'm doing right now. And so 
I leverage the power of connections. I remember in fifth grade, I had this one teacher and I remember seeing oh, a work van with her last name on it, but it said electric below it. And I remembered that after a few years, I'm like, hey, I remember her family owned this small electrical company in the small town I grew up in. And so then I contacted her and I said, hey, I was wondering if uh, you could get me an interview with them type thing. And so then regardless, one thing led to the next and they believed in me. They seen the spirit in me. They seen the fight that I was ready to go for. And they gave me a shot and they're willing to do school to work with me too. So they let me work on weekends. They left me, the school, let me leave at noon and go work after that. And so that was like the very, very early beginnings. Uh, the first whole year was basically digging ditches uh, for electrical wire, working on trailers, smaller service work. There were little smaller, pettier jobs. Um, and so then I had the idea to move into bigger uh, commercial industrial jobs. And that's what I wanted to do. I believe I've told the story of where I'm running around with a resume on a frozen lake in northern Michigan when we were ice fishing, trying to get myself a job with the owner of this big commercial industrial electrical company because I seen his work truck at the, the boat launch. And so it led to that. And so I started getting into the trade, starting into bigger projects that I really loved. It was just so cool. Experiences I couldn't even explain that most people couldn't even fathom. And so a lot of the people on the job site seen my ambition. They seen how poor I was, how I couldn't afford many things, and so a lot of people took me under their wing. And they treated me as like their own son, they taught me everything, especially because I took it in. I asked even more questions once I learned they were willing to help me. And I just kept on growing from there. I leveraged what everybody else had 20, 30 years experience in and super siphoned that into my mind. And so that way I could supercharge myself and move forward. And those guys were glad to do so. And unfortunately, there's something in life that happens where everybody wants to see you do good, but nobody wants to see you do better than them, especially in a shorter amount of time. So a lot of those people, unfortunately, grew jealous over time. And there are friends that I have uh, coincidentally lost. But I will forever thank them. They're a super huge part of my story, and I would ever I would do anything for those people because they uh, helped me become who I was. Uh, but you know, there was just so many fun times growing up through the trades. Uh, right out of high school, I got to buy a Jeep uh, Wrangler uh, TJ for those of you that are into it. And I got to build it, do the four-inch lift kit, uh, 35-inch tires, 15-inch wheels, all that. Tricked out all the fenders with the flat fenders, built the engine, got new tops, new interior, did all the fun. Had a huge jeeping group that I was a part of. We go off-roading through northern Michigan. And it was just the absolute blast of a life. But then things come into different seasons in life where you have to sell things uh, to invest in a company or into buying a house or things like that. So I ended up selling it, but it was just a great life. I was like the rich kid out of high school that didn't have rich parents. I got to buy a property. If I wanted to go spend $2,000 on a gun randomly on a Saturday, I could go do it. And I did. I made a lot of great friends in the trades, which I'm assuming if you haven't got started, you definitely will. And if you have have started I'm sure most of your friends are tradesmen as well yeah, we fucking... Fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> this shitty ass board right here. Uh, just a lot of great people you know meet up on a Friday Saturday night go have some beers around a bonfire uh, a lot of just a lot of great people I can't even express that enough people that had learned things they would help me out I didn't have a lot of money I had no money so people that were in the trades longer than me. They might have an old blown up pair of strippers or an old smashed up screwdriver that they would give me because I couldn't afford one of my own. And you know, like a lot of that stuff, it's very sentimental to me because those guys, they seen something in me and they believed in me and they gave me a shot. And uh, so I thank you guys if you're watching that. But you know, a lot of times there's so much fun that happened. There'd be on job sites and people would just do something dumb, something funny. I just remember one time offhand we were working on this big apartment complex and we were getting to meet everybody. I started developing relationships with people that were the plumbers, the builders, the HVAC guys, the concrete guys, and we were all starting to kind of play pranks on each other. And you know, one day there was this huge windstorm in Traverse City and this tree falls over and one guy goes out there, he takes the time before work and he writes on the sign, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. I've fallen and I can't get up. 
and he nails it on the side of this tree. It's just something dumb that nobody would ever think of, but when I got to the job, I just kind of chuckled about it and just left it there for about a week, and everybody just kind of laughed and joked about it. There'd be days where I'd come back to my truck, and there'd be an extremely, extremely wide pair of panties thrown over the rearview mirror of my truck, someone wrapped around it, and it was somebody I'd worked with, and I'd take and I'd fling it over to another guy's like uh, radio antenna, things like that, you know, and so... It's just so many good times. It's really hard to explain the uh, the fun, the relationships that are built on the jobs. You get to know these people, and then you end up hanging out with them outside of work, too. And, you know, you'll just be cranking away on a job site, and you're getting stuff done, and you're just kind of joking back and forth, maybe pulling pranks on. Someone comes back from lunch, and they have electrical tape all over all their tools, and you got to cut it off. And it's just such dumb little stupid stuff, but it's fun. It's just little tricks and games and things like that that just make life a little better. It makes work that much more enjoyable. It's just a good life. I miss that life, honestly, of being able to just do that stuff. And, you know, getting started, it was such a huge change for me right out of high school, especially because I was taking on too much too soon, which I always do, but that's how massive growth happens. Uh, and, you know, so it's like a lot of times my back would completely lock up because I deal with anxiety very often. Like, it's something that's always been very pertinent in my life. And so it's like my back would lock up completely with muscle, like just seizing up. And I would have to sit there and I have to try to stretch it out midday or things like that. Or uh, I can't even explain some of the other uh, situations that would happen. But I was trying to move up in the ranks so fast. Uh, first two years, I was probably the worst apprentice anybody could ever have. I was dumb. I just didn't get anything. Nothing worked out for me. But I had a lot of fun. People still liked me. And uh, thankfully, they helped me break out of my kind of shell of being like a single person, of uh, just trying to not talk to anybody ever. All I wanted to focus on was work. But these guys around me actually broke this out for me and helped me build my communication skills. They helped me uh, build a better life, honestly, even though I wanted them to leave me the fuck alone because I just wanted to do work. But they kind of pushed me towards it. And so then after the second year, things started to click for me. I started to get it. I started going and going and started building momentum faster than most people probably ever have. By the third year, I was running my own projects that were over a million dollar projects. They were like my first project was a, a fire hall and police hall and township hall. And it was a very big commercial project with a lot of underground and conduits and new apprentices. And I was teaching new apprentices and I was like, uh, like a phoenix rising from the ashes. So that was super exciting to get to be a part of that. And having that change, that experience in my life of fighting over and over again every single day. Failing over and over again every single day. And then all of a sudden, boom, I get this opportunity to rise up. And I realized that every single failure I had taught me a lesson that helped me do that. And so when that job came around I felt like Rocky out there just knocking all these problems out and just fighting everybody and just everything went great and so guys you can create a great life in the trade there's a lot of people that had fishing boats that would take me out on a weekend there's a lot of people that had mountain bikes that I would go mountain bike with a lot of people that had a Jeep that would go jeeping with me and I met all these people on job sites and we kind of connected and met their families and their friends and their groups and kind of went from there learn new skills new hobbies and it's just a great way to meet people. It's a great way to build a, a family, a relationship, a group of your own. But I definitely recommend the trades and getting into the trades and apprenticeship to anybody that is interested. If you think you don't want to go to college, if you think maybe you want to try something before you go to college, if you think maybe, hey, this is something I'd like to do, hey, maybe I'd like to be a contractor, hey, maybe I'd like to have a landscape design company, uh, architecture company, anything like that, you can't go wrong with getting started in this. And you can build great relationships, great friendships, and just have a damn good time doing it too. Just make sure you don't go home from work and sit on your couch and don't ever leave that couch after work because you're tired. Shut up, stop being a pussy, and get back out there and have some fun. Because everybody's tired, but guess what? Life's short. You don't deserve the next day. And you got to get out there, and you got to make the most of it. you got to have fun, and that's ultimately what's going to make your life the better. And you can do it through the trades. There's no such thing as having a shitty life through the trades if you want a better life. You only have a shitty life through the trades if you allow it to be shitty. So guys, if you know anybody that's looking to get into the trades, maybe you're like everything I just explained, just have an idea, a wild hair up your ass that you're looking to go do something like this. Uh, make sure you reach out to me. Instagram is linked in the bio below. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me through DM on there. 
Uh, make sure you follow there. We have a lot of great content coming out on there. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on this video here. To see more content is this uh, with the Blue Collar Power Hour, which we do every Tuesday, as well as fun videos that we do on Thursdays, so trades related stuff or going on an adventure series of how I go take vacations, which are usually short one to three day vacations through the trades just because I'm so busy with my own business, but how you can get out there and enjoy life and have a good life and build a good life through the trades. So make sure you tell all your friends about it. Anybody you know might be interested. And I uh, can't wait to catch you on the next one. And again, my name's Luke C. Marcotte. Welcome back to the Blue Collar Power Hour. God damn. Shit. <laughs> I, think it just, I think it was just a fart. Damn, <laughs> dude. Hey, get off that, boy. Uh, get out of there. You nasty. <laughs> Harlan. Shoo shoo boo boo. Motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it.